It's dusk when I meet the Capital Kiwi Project team near Terawhiti Station. I'm Paul Ward and I'm the uh, founder and project lead for the Capital Kiwi Project. I'm uh, Jeff Hall, I guess I'm a, a, a field services uh, ranger I suppose you could call me for the, uh, the Capital Kiwi Project. Uh, now also live, live locally here in Makara. We set off to the top of the farm. From there, the sea is still as glass and the sky is just turning a soft pink. There's no wind and the turbines are quiet except for a faint hum. The perfect conditions to catch a kiwi call. A number of the birds released were fitted with transmitters to help with monitoring. Jeff takes out a transmitter to help with our search. Every week or two, just to, uh, the transmitters output a, a, a a whole lot of information to us as to whether they're um, incubating on a, if they they could be nesting or or what they've been how much activity they've they've, they've been um, up to every every night. Um. Horribly loud. The frequency of beeps offers insights into the kiwis' habits and where they might be. bird across the across the gully from us here a few hundred meters and at the moment that um, the beeps you can hear uh, it's going through its output sequence which when I'm in the field I would sit down and be counting counting the beeps and recording them and then I can put those into a database and then that that spits out at me what the uh, what the bird's been up to whether it's um, whether it's nesting or whether it's been out for eight hours last night or not, or it's, it's a bit like a Fitbit for the uh, for a kiwi. If you look at this landscape that we're standing in now, which is you know lots of ferns, lots of like low-growing scrub and things, um, sometimes you can hone in on a spot that might be like you know five meters square, but it still might take you 10, 15 minutes to figure out where the bird is in that patch, and that's yeah. when that's when the dogs come in useful. But yeah, yeah, the transmitter technology definitely makes life a lot easier. We don't have to interfere, and it's only it's an annual process of catching the bird, refitting the transmitter, and then it's hands off until they they nest. Once a chick has has hatched, we're able to then catch the chick at the nest, and uh, and start monitoring the chick. Our ultimate goal is to have no monitored birds whatsoever, and and to have once we've got the confidence that. This population is settled, established and growing. Our goal is to yeah, remove those transmitters and, and for the birds to live their wild lives on, on Wellington's hills. That was what was so exciting about our first chicks. So when they made that fighting weight of uh, 1.2 kilos, which was what, about six weeks ago, two, two months ago, Jeff? When we, were, when we snipped their uh, transmitter off, they were our first homegrown wild kiwi chicks on the hills of Pornike in a, in a long, long time. It's the realisation of a project more than seven years in the making. We were able to bring the first kiwi back in late 2022 and then over the next last couple of years we've got 138 yep. kiwi. You know, people might be surprised about how adaptable and, and resilient uh, kiwi are. Um, one of the things we like to remind people is that they are tough, feisty and you don't name your, your rugby league team or your, your army after... I didn't organise that. So that would be where we've got a male and female calling to each other? The male sounded like it was the one across the valley here, and the female... Maybe somewhere... Yeah, could, yeah, but it, but yeah, so, so that just for context as well, where those calls have came from is probably like three or four hundred metres away from us. So as I was saying, the um, you know they are quite t tough, feisty animals. Um, you know, with a little bit of care from us, um, they can uh, live alongside us in the wild on on the hills. We stay for a bit longer and hear even more kiwi before heading back down to Makara. I ask Paul and Jeff how it feels to see the project realised and to hear Kiwi back in the hills of Wellington. Pretty special, it, you know, it kind of, uh, you, get the, you get the chills when you hear those birds calling from the hills. And, you know, there's been seven or eight years work gone into this effort to return Kiwi. Our landowners, our iwi, our um, communities that have 
that have put so much into it. So when you do hear those birds calling, and tonight, Jeff, I think we heard what three three pairs, mm. and 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 the odd individual. It's yeah, it's very sweet. What about for you, Jeff? How are you feeling after tonight's listening? Ah, yeah, it's it's always exciting to hear to hear Kiwi in any in any space, but to to hear them out the back of Wellington here is next level, really. Definitely exciting stuff. That was Paul Ward and Jeff Hall of the Capital Kiwi Project speaking to Janina Schwanaka. And you can find out more about the team and Terafiti Station on our webpage rnz.co.nz slash countrylife.